Welcome to another episode of Wall Meet Games. I am your host, as always, Alex Zarko. And today I'm going to be playing for you Castlevania Bloodlines for the Sega Genesis. As you see the opening cutscene set the stage here, you'll notice that this game takes place during World War I. And I've always thought that the implication there was supposed to be that Dracula's forces have maybe influenced the course of the war. I'm not sure if that's true, but that was always my takeaway at least. And I think this is the first time where we don't play as a member of the Belmont family. So you will see as I start things here that I can choose between two different player characters. We've got John Morris who uses the classic whip, and we have Eric Lacard who uses a spear. So depending on who you choose, there will be subtle differences in the gameplay. I'm going to go with John. So the main difference between the two characters is that John Morris can use his whip to swing from any kind of a ceiling surface and access areas that Eric could not and Eric can use his spear to vault himself up onto platforms that John could not reach. So depending on who you choose, you're going to see slightly different areas of levels, maybe a different sub-boss here or there. Aside from that, things play pretty much like any of the other classic Castlevania games. I've got the whip upgrades there. These gems will act as um, ammunition for my sub-weapons, so that's kind of a replacement for the hearts from the previous games. And your sub-weapon is going to supplement your main weapon, which is a little more limited in range and direction. So the axe here lets me shoot upward, for example. Um, it's important to note that I can attack diagonally and I can attack down, but only while jumping. And that's kind of an important distinction in practice because it makes sure that the sub-weapon is still a very important piece of your arsenal, as opposed to Super Castlevania 4 where you can whip in any direction at any time, and it kind of seems to take away from the meaning of the sub-weapons a little bit, so I think that this was kind of a nice balance between the two. I can jump on stairs in this game. Always welcome. Now this game only features three sub-weapons. They've taken out the dagger and the stopwatch from previous games. But each sub-weapon now has two attacks. So we've got the normal attack there, or I can consume more ammo to shoot it like that. And I think that that kind of makes up for the omission of a couple of the other sub-weapons that I honestly didn't use as much. The dagger, I always thought, was kind of a lesser, weaker version of the boomerang. The stopwatch can have its place, but I, overall I don't really miss either of those too much. Now you may have noticed right off the bat that there's a bit more gore in this game, as opposed to some of the past Nintendo Castlevania games. And that's because this one being on Sega, it kind of allowed them to, to really go for it a little more. You'll see I just got a final upgrade to my whip there. And that'll go away if I take any damage, so you really want to make sure you're careful once you do get that. And it also gives you a special sub-weapon that's kind of like a, uh, a large crash right here, you see. It'll home in on any kind of enemy. But to be honest, I tend to prefer having the axe over this special sub-weapon because it uses up so much of my ammunition. It doesn't, t it, it doesn't seem like it's worth it all the time. It can be good on bosses. But you're going to see me pretty much hold on to the axe for most of this game. 
because it's able to attack above my head and it's also able to shoot in front of me, it seems like it's just got pretty much everything I really need. So even though I'm not endorsed by the X in any way, you're going to hear me praise it quite heavily throughout this playthrough. We have some wall meat up here. Break through the cracked wall there. And then as you ascend these falling bones, there's a candle containing a 1-up. You want to grab that if possible, but don't get yourself killed trying. Something else in this game I really like is that you'll see there's a different design for candles that contain a sub-weapon in them. You'll see that this candle here is slightly different colored. And I think that's a nice touch because it just kind of lets you know where the sub-weapons are, you don't accidentally pick up one that you didn't want. It's always frustrating. We've got our first boss here. keep aggressive on him and he'll go down pretty easily. And you'll see that I did get hit once there so I lost my whip upgrade. And there you have it. As always we pick up our life gem there or whatever it's supposed to be and we move on our way. Now this is one of the only classic Castlevania games that I can remember at least where you do have limited lives and continues. But you also have a password system that alleviates that somewhat. It can be a little frustrating though. Some really nice background effects going on for this level here. Something else I think I failed to mention is that if you hold your attack button down while you're whipping, you can actually do two consecutive hits with one whip. So that'll kind of encourage you not to button mash too much. And the axe here is especially useful for any of these vertical sections. It'll allow you to kill things before they quite become a threat. And then there's a 1-up here if you hit a candle with your axe. You want to be quick at that so that you get it before the water rises. Eric Lacard can actually be pretty useful for these vertical sections as well because it allows him to um, use his pole vault technique to ascend a lot quicker. I think overall Eric is a bit easier to use, especially because he can actually attack upward and diagonally while standing still and, and not having to jump to do so, which I think overall makes things a little bit e easier. I'm going to grab this axe even though I just got the special sub-weapon because I kind of just prefer it. There's going to be one more guy here. If you're feeling intimidated by him, you can kind of just get him with your sub-weapons from a distance. But eventually he will jump on your head, like right here. And that's your chance to really go hog wild. <clears throat> so 
another vertical scrolling section, this time down. Mostly we just want to watch out for the Medusa heads here. Now I, I believe this was actually the first time that Yamane composed the Castlevania game. She would go on to do Symphony of the Night to much acclaim. And I think she did a really good job on this one too. Be extra careful because if these guys knock into the water, that's a one hit kill. No good for anyone. Some more nice background effects going on with the clouds here. I think that this game looks really nice. It's got, um, overall a pretty saturated color palette compared to some of the other games and um, still manages to maintain the horror vibe while still doing so. I've always thought that Castlevania 2 and sometimes Castlevania 4 can be a little bit brown. But I do enjoy those games quite a bit too. We don't really need it, but there's some meat right here. I kind of would like to get my axe back once again. done here. I believe we have one more screen before the boss. I'm hoping I can grab the X. Because I do prefer to have it for him. Oh, there it is. And we got it. This is a fairly simple boss. You basically want to break down all of the rocks that are around his base so that you can deal damage to the eye that's at the top. So the axe is pretty nice to have because you'll see I can actually hit the entire stack of rocks at the same time. When he punches the ceiling like that, the rocks are going to fall. And if you get all the way to the left of the screen, you'll be safe from that. Go to the left. <laughs> Didn't make any fall that time. Now the eye is actually pretty weak once you get to it. Okay, from here on out the game starts to kind of ramp up on the difficulty a little bit. This wasn't the first Castlevania game that I played as a kid, but I do believe it was the first one that I beat. My grandfather bought it for me, I remember. And for whatever reason, this one just seemed a little bit easier to me than the, uh, the NES games. I would kind of prefer to have my axe here once again. Because I'm wasting a lot of, of ammo on these guys. Sometimes you'll actually chop the heads off of these harpies. But they'll stay alive. And they'll have blood 
pouring out of their necks as they still attack you, and it's kind of cool. On this screen, you just kind of want to keep jumping up the steps. And you can avoid almost all the obstacles there. And this is a section that normally, um, with Eric, you would jump overhead here and access a different part of the levels than John can. When you're playing as John, you're able to swing over the ceiling here and access a part of the level that, that Eric could not, so this is kind of one of those areas I was talking about where things split. It's never anything very major, it's usually just a very small section of the level. But it can be worth playing through the game as both characters just to kind of check it out. I'm not sure how they would have incorporated it, but it would have been really cool to see a, a two-player mode for this, where you can play as both. more fancy effects going on here with the background. Now you're, what you're going to kind of want to do here is stay over to the right. Just because there is a candle containing a 1-up at some point. You, know, you do want to make sure you get that. Let's see where we find it. There it was. So you want to make sure you're actually standing on the um, on the platform that's containing it, so that when you strike it, it doesn't just fall off screen. You don't want to really miss it. Oop. And we lost our special whip there. No biggie. One say one thing I will say negatively about this game is the sound effects are pretty weak. You'll notice there's there's really no uh, impact sound for when I whip something. Just the sound for whipping itself. It's not the end of the world, but it is something I can criticize. <clears throat> Now this is a pretty tricky section here. You really want to make sure you're taking care of these gargoyles as they appear, not letting them get out of hand, and not giving them a chance to knock you off of the platforms. Because if you do get hit here, it can often be a one-hit kill. I tend to actually prefer the, um, the boomerang sub-weapon for this part. Which, that one actually just dropped. But, the axe will work just fine. I would just prefer not to have the, uh, the holy water if possible. Okay, just keep being very careful here, you don't want to get knocked off. It's a very common spot for me to die. Let that guy through, and that was very dangerous. Okay, we're through the hard part there. And we're gonna have the gargoyle boss. Most of the bosses in this game actually aren't too hard, especially compared to Castlevania 1, Castlevania 3. But again, you do want to make sure you don't get knocked off of the platform here by this guy, because that can be a one-hit kill.
Okay, let's see what we've got coming up here next. I believe it's the munition factory. Indeed it is. Germany. So this opening section here, you just kind of keep moving to the right as quickly as you can. You'll bypass a lot of these enemies. So don't worry about getting every candle. Just kind of keep moving. These guys actually take two hits to kill. Uh, there is a secret up here I'm going to attempt to show you. It's kind of hard to get. You want to do a, a swing here, but you want to get up onto that platform above head. It's tricky to do. I kind of want to do a, a short swing if possible. There we go. It's a little tricky to pull off, but you've got a one-up, so it's kind of worth it to dick around there. It's a little easier to get up there with um, Eric. And then we've also got a hidden meat over here. Break through the wall. So we don't have to worry about the damage we just took there. Actually going to take the boomerang for this level. The game insists on giving me that um, that special sub weapon, doesn't it? I think I'll get rid of it for the axe, actually. Actually, is a one-up beneath this guy. If you fall down here and you swing, I'm not really in need of one-up, so I'm not gonna risk going for it. Because if you miss the swing, you die. That's good to know. These things will smush you in one hit, so be careful on these. Just take your time. Classic clock tower going on here. I don't think a Castlevania game would be complete without one. Watch out for Medusas as always. I know a lot of people have a really hard time dealing with Medusa heads, and they can be a bitch. I find in this game the trick to them is to kind of just keep moving, and you'll kind of just outpace them. You want to watch out for the ghosts that will appear while you're doing this platforming section, because they can just knock you right off the edge. Which can be really irritating. So watch out for them. It's being a bully. There we go. Ooh, we've got Frankenstein's monster here. Oh, 
Okay. Not too bad. Now these things can kill you in one touch, so you really want to be careful not to touch the edges of this thing. We don't want that holy water. Let's make sure you time that carefully. Now this one's a real bitch, you gotta kind of just want to edge yourself under it and duck edge a little more and duck and keep it up don't hit your head on that thing now we do want the boomerang for this section I find it makes things a bit easier so we can hit these guys for more of a distance If I were to jump over there and try and get them with my whip, they may uh, they may counterattack and, and just knock me right off the ledge. So it's much safer to use the boomerang. This guy in particular, I find, can be a little hard to actually hit without using the whip. And he gets me sometimes, he likes to knock me off, and I get pretty mad at him. So I don't have a good relationship with that guy. <clears throat> okay, I believe we have a boss coming up now. This can be one of the harder bosses until you get the hang of it. It's kind of a, a pattern to his his attacks here. When it gets really tiny like that, he's prone to running quickly like he just did and, and you really want to watch out for that. Got him on the ropes now. And you don't have to run away from these gears, but I like to pretend like you do. Okay, so coming up next... I think we have a garden level. And honestly, I think that this level probably gives me more trouble than any of the others, including the final level. It's a bit long, and there's just a lot of, um, there's a lot of potentially difficult things if you're not careful. Now these big roses you'll see here don't actually damage you with their pollen. What they're doing to me there is actually reversing my controls so when I press left I'm walking right and vice versa. A little disorienting but not the end of the world. You can kind of just let it wear off here. Yourself moving quickly through here. I do like to get the boomerang to help me with these guys. So what you're gonna want to do here, hopefully we can pull it off, is throw the boomerang and hit him twice, and then you get him once with your whip. There we go. But these guys can be very deadly if you don't know how to deal with them correctly. Utilize the um, 
the double attack on your whip for these knights. Remember I said if you hold the attack button you can actually attack twice. It's very effective on these guys. You can also knock the chandeliers down on them. Now at the end of the hallway here is a sword wielding one. It's kind of why you see me slowly walking. Because I want to kill him while he's off screen. I think he's coming up pretty close here. There he is. So what I'm going to do here is attack him while he's off screen and that kind of gives me more of a chance to kill him before he gets to me. Now on this part, you really just want to take your time and only wake up one of these at a time. Because it can actually be pretty easily easy to accidentally wake up a whole bunch of them. And it can be pretty difficult then. If you just attack one at a time, you'd be perfectly fine. This is another spot where Eric Lacard would have jumped upward and accessed a different section of the level. Where John will whip over here. Occasionally these guys will actually drop um, a meat. And there's also one right here. But yeah, occasionally these hunchback guys will actually throw a, um, a meat right out of their bag. It's kind of rare, but if you're really in a bind, you could try to force one out. Now this section, if you just keep jumping repeatedly, you can usually get yourself to the top of this with little trouble. But if anything stops you, it can quickly kind of get out of hand. You'll end up falling all the way back down to the bottom. It can be a little frustrating. So just keep hopping. I'm hoping I'll make it. There we go. A little sub-boss here. I'll happily use my sub weapon on him there. But I don't want to use all of my ammo because I do have another sub boss coming up that's fairly difficult. Hammer guys are not much of a threat if you just keep a distance. But there will be a guy on wheels here that you're going to want to watch out for. He'll catch you off guard if you don't know that he's there. And also this guy with the Gatling gun. <laughs> Apparently Dracula's been upgrading. Now this guy can give me a bit of trouble. I think because I have this special sub weapon it's going to make things quite a bit easier. What you really want to do is make sure you destroy those things as they appear and not let them get away from you. Because if they do, you can get out of hand. But this sub weapon is making things much easier. I don't think I usually have that for this part. Okay, and now we're just going to move on to the boss. I'm going to take the axe. So we're getting low on ammo. And she will be attacking me from above, so it'll be nice to have that.
not the hardest boss, as long as you kind of stay aggressive. I think it's more that she comes at the end of a very difficult level. Okay. I like how you can see what appears to be maybe a cocoon behind you or something. I'm never quite sure what that is. Okay, now we move on to the final level. It's actually probably my favorite final level from this whole series. And you'll see why. It has a lot of cool gimmicks to it. So for this part, these mirrors will really mess with you. It separates the screen into about four pieces, I think. And what you're gonna want to do is just stare at your feet. Always look at your feet, and that'll let you know where you're actually standing. It's easier said than done. And usually you want to make sure you kill these Medusas before you progress. There we go. Yeah, that section can be tough. Now for this section, they have reversed my controls as far as up and down. So if I press up, I will duck. And if I press down, I'm gonna walk up the steps. And that is pretty disorienting, if I'm being honest. I frequently die there, if I'm, if I'm being honest. <clears throat> now for this section we're going to have the first boss of the game kind of running at you quickly so you want to make sure you're just staying on your toes here don't get distracted by all these candles and uh, listen for the guy running Make sure you stop and attack as soon as you hear that noise. And now we are approaching the first of a large string of bosses. The first being Death, the Grim Reaper. And before we fight him, he's going to summon a few of the past bosses to make me battle for a second time. So depending on which card that you whip there, you're kind of choosing the order that you fight these things in. Nothing we haven't fought before, so we should be okay. These are actually weaker versions of their previous selves, so they will go down a, a bit faster. Especially using the whip that we have here. This card is actually just an attack of his. And one of the cards is, um... It's a bunch of turkeys that he'll give you, so you kind of want to save that, I think, until the end. Or at least until you, you feel like you need it. So 
Actually, this guy is going down much faster this time. But like I said before, just be sure you don't get knocked off the edge, because that's an easy way to die. You almost got me right there. Okay, I think we have one more. And then we deal with Death himself. So we're gonna fight the clock. I'll call him the clock. Sure, it'd be nice if I could hold on to the whip upgrade for the Grim Reaper. Looks like I did. That'll be good. Grim Reaper isn't really that hard, but <clears throat> I'll take anything I can get. Here's the turkey card. And we will fight him. This is kind of a chance to really go on on the offense when he uses that attack right there. Yeah, he melted like butter using the special whip. It's a bit tricky to actually get to him with that whip, because you're going to have to beat all of those bosses without getting hit. Now we are going to fight Elizabeth Bartley. Takes the form of the Medusa. Just want to duck really close to her when she uses that attack. Jump over that one messed that up a bit. So we did lose our whip, unfortunately. That's okay. Now she has a second form. And for this form, she's going to teleport back and forth across the screen. And you basically just need to make sure you hit her before she disappears. And if you don't do this quickly, you're going to run out of time. And if you run out of time, she'll actually cast a spell. So you want to be very consistent in hitting her and not let her loose a single time. And I would also advise ducking after each attack, because she is casting a fireball, you can see there. And if you do things right, you'll actually hit her before she casts that fireball, but I'm not doing things quite right. So you want to make sure you, you get that duck in there. I find this to be kind of a, a tedious fight. But if you don't pay attention and kind of lose your focus for a moment, she can mess you up. She'll mess up your day. gonna kind of focus here. I don't want her to mess up my day. Okay, one more should do it. And always remember that cool guys do not watch explosions. John Morris is a cool guy.
Nice rendition of Simon's theme here from Castlevania 4. I think I actually am gonna take the axe. Once again, not endorsed by the axe in any way. I just think it's a great product. So now we've got Dracula himself. First part, he behaves pretty much like he does in most of the other games. Just kind of teleports and shoots fireballs at you. I want to get him in the head, simultaneously hitting the fireballs that he's shooting. But he moves pretty quickly in this game compared to some of the other ones. Now he's going to turn into some sort of a, a wraith, I guess you could call it. And you mostly just kind of want to use your axe on him at this point. Now his final form is true form. Turn into, I guess you'd call some sort of a, uh, a bat demon. Pretty typical for Dracula to do. Just stay aggressive, you kind of want to keep him over there in the corner. If you can help it. Once he turns red, he's going to start casting fire on you. Just jump over that, keep attacking. Pretty tight with your jump there. And then for this final part, he's gonna start throwing bones down on your head. There you have it. The light of day vanquishes evil. Jump for joy. It's kind of a tradition around here. Now this game doesn't really have very much of an ending unless you beat it on the, um, I think they call it expert difficulty. And you can't unlock expert difficulty until you beat it on normal, so we're just going to see the normal ending here. There's not really much to it. They want you to play through it a second time. The resurrection of Dracula has been averted. And that's it. So there we have Castlevania Bloodlines for the Sega Genesis. Hope you all enjoyed it. I'm glad we made it through without any deaths, that's always a plus. Okay, this has been Wall Made Games and I will see you all next time.